State lawmakers have given their perspective on the implications of the governor's budget proposal. Now it's time to hear what's being said on the local level. We welcome here now for a closer look West Hartford Mayor Scott Slifka and the executive director of the Connecticut uh, Conference of Municipalities, Jim Finley. Sorry, I've messed that up there. Thanks both of you for coming. So first of all, just give me your initial reaction to um, some of Governor Rell's uh, plans. Well, the initial reaction was relief in the sense that from a purely parochial standpoint uh, that the governor proposed holding municipal aid uh, where it is. So we're not, we were preparing for cuts in that. It's, it appears not to be happening. We'll see what happens throughout the legislative session. The bad news is none of the structural deficits that are need to be fixed are even up for discussion right now. I mean, it's been sent off to commissions, and it's being essentially it's being punted. I think the, the governor should uh, apply to the NFL because <laughs> she'd be the best punter uh, you'll ever find. So, um, give us an example of some of those structural deficits. Like, wh well, how I mean, much are we talking look about? At the, well, I think it's in excess of three billion dollars for for this uh, this coming year, where it's either borrowed or it's being spent through uh, one-time revenues, the federal aid, et cetera, and. That, that will all go away next year unless you borrow again, but the federal aid won't come back. And at some point, this problem does become reality. And we can tell you what happens at the local level. Yeah, tell me that. what does happen in West Hartford when that happens. I'll give you a, a general issue of what's happening everywhere in these towns. What all the towns and cities and state of Connecticut are facing is what I call the GM problem. That GM went bad in short because it, no, it stopped focusing on its product. It became a company that existed just to pay the benefits of its former employees. Not the present employees doing good work, but the former employees. Pension and health care, et cetera. Those things couldn't get addressed. That's what's happening in our communities. Instead of focusing on educating our kids, on fighting crime, on doing economic development, which the state so desperately needs, we are spending our time figuring out how do we pay for these long-term liabilities and how do we deal with the structural issues that the state imposes on us. Have you been able to come up with any answers to that or how towns and cities can do well, that? Jim's got a list of about 1,500 <laughs> he, could, he could share with you. We do. Yeah, well, one of the good things in the governor's budget proposal is she uh, uh, proposed a number of mandates relief uh, initiatives, uh, things that uh, cost the towns and cities a lot of money. But mandates relief cannot make up one-to-one -one for cuts in state aid. Mm -hmm. And as the mayor said, uh, the governor basically uh, had a level-funded uh, budget in regard to municipal aid. But towns and cities are hurting. We've already taken a $100 million uh, hit in this two-year state budget. Uh, the governor had proposed only six weeks ago $84 million right. in mid-year cuts, so we were relieved, as the mayor said, that she did not propose that again. So since you're already hurting, for her to keep it level, um, you're still hurting, right? Yeah, education costs are increasing, as the mayor knows uh, very well. Edu uh, West Harvard's got a fine education system, but it's, it's under a lot of stress. The fact of the matter is the property tax system in Connecticut cannot fund education to the extent that it's being called on to do. The state share of uh, K through 12 public education costs are, is the lowest it's been since 1983. It's just under 37 percent. So, will um, property taxes be raised in certain towns and cities? Oh, sure. I, I, I think it's inevitable that you're going to see that in a lot of places. In West Hartford, we were able to cut spending last year. We're going to attempt to do that again this year. But again, no, none of the structural issues that lead to that have been fixed. So, this is two years in a row. The thing that shocks me more than anything is that not that a solution hasn't been reached in two years of this, but that there still doesn't seem to be an acceptance of the new reality and how desperate times are and how you needed a solution a year ago, and now they're deciding to punt it for at least one year more. But why do you think that's happening? I mean, are they not hearing you, or are they not listening to you, or...? I think there's a lot of good people up at the Capitol, especially in my delegation, who do hear us and do understand, but I think on the whole, most of these people are not at the uh, at the grassroots level. They don't have to deal with, uh, with letting go uh, employees. They don't have to deal with negotiating directly with the unions. They don't have to look that resident in the eye and say, I'm sorry, I have to get rid of your service or, or uh, raise your taxes. They don't have to do that. There's a certain distance in Hartford, and I think especially in the governor's office, that leads to kind of a, you know, just a, a benignness uh, to, to the situation. So what do you do, Jim? I mean, how can you, how can you get this through? Well, I think one of the things that, that folks are looking for from the local level is leadership at the state level, as the mayor indicated. Um, we, we, we're in the uh, beginnings of a gubernatorial campaign. There is no substitute for gubernatorial leadership in dealing with some of the systemic problems that Connecticut faces right now. How do we finance public education? How do we uh, wean cities and towns off the property tax so that we're not relying on the most unfair 
and regressive tax in Connecticut uh, to fund the majority of public services. Uh, how do we foster intermunicipal cooperation in a more regional approach uh, to uh, providing local government services? So you're watching this governor's race closely. Uh, very closely. Very closely. Um, it, what if you could, you know, we just had Senator McKinney and Williams on. I mean, if you could sit those guys down, you know, go out and have dinner with them tonight, what would be the one thing, I mean, I guess it would be the structural, structural deficits, that you would say, listen, you guys have got to get in the room and do this? I think we'd want to tell quickly what, you know, what, what the individual story is for a town and explain that that's happening in 168 yeah. other places uh, and that there is an effect to, to their inactivity. Mm -hmm. um, I think if we asked them about one issue, it would be about the, the unfunded mandates. If we were to say there's, other than the, the funding that we get from the state and making sure that stays at the right level, since it doesn't look like it's going to go up anytime right. soon, that we would say you've got to get rid of the unfunded mandates. Take the shackles off the cities and towns. Please don't impose these things on us anymore. We might be able to do it better and cheaper. Right, right. Well, okay. Well, you guys have a lot of uh, hard work ahead of you. Thank you very much for taking some time Thank with you. us. West Hartford Mayor Scott Slifka and the Executive Director of the Kinetic Conference of Municipalities, Jim Finley, weighing in. Don't forget, if you missed something here on The Real Story, you can now watch it online by going to ctnow.com. You can also catch us on YouTube. Thank you for watching this week's edition of The Real Story. We'll see you here again next week.